In 2003, just two years into my career, the first job I ever had, I was in a technical field. I was confused. I was insecure. I wasn't really sure being in a technical field was right for me. In 2005, I wanted to prove my own self worth. I went out. I went out and purchased my first house, which is four times more than what I was making. I was crazy. In 2007. I moved to New York City because I wanted to feel I was in control of my own life. I major in finance and marketing, 180 degrees, completely different from what I was doing in technical fields. In 2012, I moved to the Middle East because I wanted to feel unbeatable. These four major events was really pivotal points in my own career. I had almost had to exit the technical field. Many people ask me why what kept me there. A mentor. My mentor Eric has never criticized me, even though he knew I was crazy. He never really told me I was doing anything incredibly wrong, but he always gave me constructive feedback. When I was age of 23, I went through my first major corporation restructuring. I fell at the bottom of my career. Eric told me, "Michelle, I will always have you on my team, without a heartbeat." His simple words boosted my confidence to the highest level I could never imagine. I felt a sense of belonging in the male-dominated area. In 2005, he didn't say I was crazy. He sent me down and mapped through my entire finance, make sure I understood how to pay monthly mortgage. He mentioned how much passive income I must have every month in order to make a living. I had a full-time job, so <laughs> I still have to have someone set me through to do it. In 2007, Eric knew I wanted to feel in control in my life. He connected me with an opportunity near New York City, so I could go to work during the day, go to school during the night. In 2012, Eric gave me advice. Took a leap of faith. I left the job and the company I have worked for ten years. I moved to Middle East without an opportunity. Three months later, I returned to the same company. Returned to this back to the STEM field. Eric has always been there to support me. Till today, I am still doing my own search, soul searching. Is the technical still right field for me? Every year, there's more than almost 50 percent of a woman entering the workforce. By the time they reach director level, the percentage drop another 14 percent. By the time they reach VP and above, it drop additional 4 percent. The chance for women in STEM is even smaller. There's only 34 percent of a woman entering the STEM field every year. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. By the time women reach VP and above, the percentage is already left to 22 percent. That means above VP, all the corporations, regardless of where you are at across the world, are men. When women are in the tech-intensive fields, especially they have business roles, they have a higher chance of leaving for other industry than men. Women are leaving at 53 percent versus men at 31 percent. And then, when women reach the tenure in their career, they start to leave the industry. Why is it so hard to get women into the STEM field, and it's even harder for them to retain in the industry? We ask many women. They mention sense of isolation, sense of belonging, lack of a feedback from senior executive leaders, or lack of sponsorship. All the points from the women are very, very crucial and very important. What can we do to change the gender gap? Because it's not a new news; it's actually been happening. The ratio hasn't changed for decades. My, I believe mentorship can help. Mentorship is something that we can control, especially with women pipeline. One in seventeen women choose to entering university, choose majoring in STEM fields. Only one in five men would choose. The STEM field as well. The women ratio is much slimmer compared to men. 
and women have a higher tendency to, re, uh, to leave the STEM field by the time they graduate. PNAS is a nonprofit organization for science and engineering. They published a study over 150 engineering women. They partnered with the mentors, female or male, or no mentors. They observed them throughout the four years throughout the college. The women who have female mentors tend to graduate with the STEM field. They have more confidence, they have less anxiety, and they gain self-efficacy. The women who have no mentors throughout the four years during the college time, they leave, they switch measure. So that's one of the main reasons I'm so passionate about having mentorship with university students. So at where I'm working at, I set up a two uh, mentorship program in UAE and Saudi Arabia. I stood up with two amazing women that have the same passion for a university pipeline. So far, we have mentored over 45 uh, students from UAE and Saudi. Our own objective and our goal is to make sure this woman graduate with the STEM fields, feel the sense of a belonging where they can be in the STEM, the male-dominated area, and also graduate with this technical degree. Mentorship is not can only help the pipeline. Mentorship can also help develop women in the early and mid-career. McKinsey and Lingen recently published a study. Women are less likely to interact with senior leaders. Yet those who do are more likely to be promoted. Women are also less likely to interact with senior leaders. Yet those who do more more likely to be aspired to be executive leaders. I was lucky enough to have Eric in my life when I was 23. When I went for my first organization restructuring, I didn't know what to do. He gave me the exposure, the knowledge, and the advice for me to continue to, to, to thrive. If mentorship is so important to me, so important to so many women, why only one in eight women has a mentor? You ask women why? Some women said, because the family obligation has intensified, especially the women in the 30s and the 40s. Or they will tell you they have never been asked. If it's so important to so many of us, why are we waiting to be asked? Mentorship can also help change the gender gaps when we turn mentors into sponsors. Sponsor is somebody who is high level enough in the organization where anywhere with exposure is ready to advocate for your promotions. A mentor is somebody who has an industry knowledge or field expertise, can guide you through along the, the career. In 2015, I faced an obstacle because I was looking for to move up in the organization. I reached out to a senior leader in my organization and I asked him to be my mentor. I told him exactly what I wanted it, but I also asked him to give me feedback. He guided me through, gave me constructive feedback. The relationship I had with this particular mentor is very formal and it's very corporate-like. We may not have a lot of chemistry, but the 15 minutes phone call I had with him every quarter is the most beneficial phone call I ever had in my career. He helped me connect to two different channels, allows me to gain exposure I couldn't have before, which led to where I am today as a CIO for a business. Unfortunately, this ratio for corporations is more than 78% of the men on the top. The mini-me syndrome tend to stay strong. A man on the top tend to groom another man on the bottom to become a mini-me. But we can change that. If a mentor can turn to a sponsor, pull the woman up, or pour a whole different type of a diversity up, we can start seeing the change. So what can you do today? If you are a woman in your career, you don't have a mentor, go out today and ask for a mentor. If you are in your mid-career, already have a mentor, then Give someone else a chance, pay it forward. Mentor a young lady in the university. 
make sure they have the, the enough self-esteem and then enough of confidence to, uh, to finish their field in the STEM field. If you already make it to the top, regardless you're men or women, offer your time and mentor the next generation. Pull them out the ladders, give them the time and advice they need, and give them the exposure and network they couldn't have on their own. I always believe we all have a power to change everything around us. Collectively, we just start mentoring one young woman today. You can start so many ripple effects. We can change the gender racial, we can change the attrition, and we can change the woman pipeline. I always stay true to myself because that's really important to me. My mentee has changed me how I see mentorship. My mentee was going through a, a, a career challenges, but I was able to tell her, you know, this is what you can do differently. What do you want to see change of where you are at? She made a career change and still stayed in the STEM field. For me, that is empowering because I could see how my mentee has changed, empower me to be a better mentee when I interact with my mentor. So today, let's walk away, mentor someone else. Collectively, we can become a really strong force. Thank you very much.